Hello, welcome back to another video on my channel, Charlie's Lessons. In this video, we're looking at bamboozle again. But this time, we're not going through any of the boring tutorial. I'm gonna show you activities that I've used with my students using this website with young learners or children, with teenagers and with adults. So let's go. So when do I use these activities in my classroom? Well, I use them primarily as warmers or fillers. So warmers is what you do at the beginning of the class to get the students warmed up, so to get them into English class mode. And then with fillers, well, that's when, you know, maybe the previous activity, they finished it too quickly, or maybe you're looking at how much time you have left in the class and you need just to fill that final part or the bridge or transition between two activities. I also use it to get my students into teams. So whenever I feel like I need to divide my students into groups, then I'll use this website to play team-based games. And I can use this to get the most out of the content I'm teaching them. I also use Bamboozle as a form of formative assessment. So if we finished a unit in a course book, or even if we finished a class, I'll use Bamboozle to test them on what we've studied. I'll also use Bamboozle to play after an exam. So let's say we do a very formal time exam at the end of the term and the students just want to relax so what I'll do is I'll take the same language and I'll pop it into a bamboozle game and it'll give them a nice relaxing stress-free way of practicing that language if you're not familiar with this website and you wanted to go take a look at how it works before looking at these activities then I'll post my video right here and you can go check that out and come back later I'll be waiting for you so we'll start with young learners, children, kids, whatever you want to call them, those little brats. So, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. With bamboozle games, you can include images in the question or the answer. And this is perfect for young learners as they are really dependent on visuals. So just the same way we use flashcards in the class. And by the way, if you like using flashcards, I've got another video right here on using flashcards in the classroom and another video right here on using flashcards in the online classroom. How many videos do I actually have? The way I usually use this with my young learners is I put the image in the question and I try to elicit from the students the answer. The second activity that I love doing with my young learners, which I found just recently, is using Bamboozle's new Story Cubes mode. If you're not familiar with Story Cubes, no, I haven't got another video for that. Story Cubes are a set of dice with images that you can use to construct stories with your older students. So the way I use Story Cubes with my students when it comes to making sentences is that in the image section when I'm making the game, I will include numbers from three to six. I will also include symbols that represent affirmative, negative, or question. And I'll also throw in some regular verbs that we've studied. Something simple like walk, talk, go, or do. And what I'll do is I'll reduce these to three dice. I'll roll all three of them until I've got one dice that represents an affirmative, negative, or question. I'll also get another dice that represents a number. And the final one that has one of those regular verbs that I included in the game. And what students need to do is come up with a sentence that's either an affirmative, a negative, or question form. Then the second dice, how many words does the sentence have to contain? And the third dice, what verb must they include? So now moving on to teen students. So those students between the ages of 13 to 17, um, you know, the students, I think they made a film about them once. Uh, what was it called? Oh, that's right, Day of the Dead. The first activity that I love doing with my teen students is again using story cubes but putting some famous people or celebrities on the images. And what I'll ask my teen students to do is to role play those people. So either for that class or for that week or if it's going really well, I might get them to do it for the whole term. The reason why I love getting my teen students to go into these roles is that it helps them to express themselves. As you know, teen students are reluctant to speak at the best of times. So I find getting them to play these roles really helps them to express themselves and without any of that embarrassment that comes with it. The second activity that I do regularly with Bamboozle for my teen students is making use of the timer. So in my school, we prepare a lot of our students for the Cambridge exams. 
If you're not familiar with the Cambridge exams, there's this one part of the exam where they have to describe a photo or describe a photo and answer questions, and it's always timed. So I use the timer, set it to the same time limit there is in the exam, I'll post a photo or image that is similar to what they might see on the day of the exam, and get them into the habit of answering this question and describing the photos in the time limit that they're expected to do it on the day of the exam. Moving on to adults, the first activity that I like to do using Bamboozle is to get my students discussing or debating political or controversial statements. The way I'll use Bamboozle for this is I'll put the question as the statement and then the answer will be either agree or disagree. The way this works is when you press check, it will come up with agree or disagree and the student has to agree or disagree with that statement and convince the rest of the class of their opinion. Just imagine you put pineapple is the best ingredient for a pizza. You press check and agree comes up and that student has to convince the rest of the class that pineapple is in fact the best ingredient for a pizza. The second activity I used with my adults very recently was on International Women's Day. So what I did with Bamboozle is I picked up a quiz on important women in history and I played that with the students at the beginning of the class. The way this worked was it got the students thinking about the topic for that class. So by doing this quiz the rest of the lesson plan that I had was a lot easier for the students to engage with and to assimilate. So there you have it, there are six activities that I've used with three different age groups, which just goes to show that this website is perfect for any age group and almost for any level. So if you haven't checked out Bamboozle website, go and do it now. And I'll see you in the next video.